Okay, for those of you that don't know me, my name is Greg Bilodeau, also known as the Radio Guy. I've been doing this for a long, long time, and I'm not a tech. I'm just a, a guy that's been doing this a lot, have lots of experience. So some of my theories may be harebrained, but whatever. <laughs> <laughs> so we're all into the same thing, collecting, restoring antique radios. A lot of you guys may recognize that nice little Crosley. It's a really common model that's out there. Um, we're just going to show you where the IF transformers are in your radio. Most of you probably already know. That's your input transformer. There's your output transformer. And what we're going to talk about is these guys right here. And they're in all of them, everywhere. AM, FM, shortwave, doesn't matter. They're there someplace. So IF transformers went through a little change. Everybody probably recognizes these big guys. These are real common on the earlier sets. And then at, after the war, into the late 40s, into the early 50s, they went to the little three-quarter inch guys. So there was some cost-saving measures incorporated into these as well as some downsizing. So this thing here, there's two coils inside. There and there. Two capacitors inside. There and there. In this case, the coils are fixed, non-adjustable, and the little screws on top are trimmer capacitors. We've all seen those in tuned circuits. They're all over the place in old radios. So when they went to this design, they went to, as Rick explained in his, the inductance is the variable component here. The capacitance is a fixed component in here. So that what they did in their cost-saving measure was they created a little tiny capacitor that mounts right in the bottom of the can, just above where the leads connect, and they call it a silver mica capacitor. And the problem that's coined online is called silver mica disease. <laughs> I've heard a couple of different explanations of what that problem is, but the one that seems to be commonly accepted is that silver can migrate. So it moves on a molecular level, and the, I should clarify a little bit, exposed to atmosphere silver can migrate a little bit. So on a molecular level it moves, and when it gets to the end of the insulator, so your insulator, your silver mic is on both sides, it's moving out towards the edge, and at the edges it does that. So it creates a very high resistance, like you can't measure it with your own meter, uh, connection. So what happens is you've just spent all kinds of time restoring this beautiful old radio. You put all new capacitors in it. You went nuts and put all new resistors and all new tubes, and it's brand spanking new. And the reception is terrible. <laughs> and no matter what you do, you can't improve it. Sounds like lightning you know in the summertime lightning off in the <coughs> distance that crackly sound on the radio and it's continuous like it's all the time and in really really bad cases there's no reception you can't hear anything other than that static and that's a pretty sure sign that it's the silver mica disease in there so the quick and really easy way to figure out which transformer it is <coughs> in and i've only ever seen it once in both and I've only ever actually seen it about a dozen times in thousands of repairs. So it's not a real common problem, but it's a stumper when it does show up because it's the last thing you think of. So just ground this grid right here. And if it's quiet, if the radio goes silent, then it's not that one. It's that one. That way you can kind of narrow down which transformer it is. And then you have to go get into it. So this is the earlier design with the trimmer capacitors right here. This is the newer design with the powdered iron core that you adjust to peak your IF transformer. So click over to the next one there, Rick. Just the side view. You can, and sometimes they're clearly marked what their frequency is. A lot of times they're not. So these come apart amazingly easily. There's just in this case there's four little like what they did is they just crimped the outside of the can so those four little divots there there and there just push them out with your needle nose pliers screwdriver whatever you got handy and then this guy slides right out of the can 
and there is what it looks like on the inside. Your primary and your secondary coils. These little wires are tiny, like 40 yeah. gauge, maybe even smaller. So uh, extra care is required because they break pretty easily. So here is the capacitor, right here. Now, cheap and easy was what they did here. <laughs> so your four little legs that you solder onto your circuit board or attach your wire to, whatever, when they were manufactured, those legs come up and through. And unfortunately, my camera, I couldn't get a good focus here. But if you look, this leg here comes through and is bent over. That's the one leg here. This leg here comes over and is bent over as well underneath. And then here is the dreaded silver mica capacitor. You can pass that little guy around. And what it is, is it's a single sheet of mica with silver vacuum deposited onto it on both sides. So the mica is your insulator, the silver is your plates. And when they manufacture this, they put it down in the bottom of here. They bend this one down, put the thing in there, bend that one down. There's your capacitor across the primary, one across the secondary. So what you have to do I picked this particular design. There's two designs of this as well. This particular design is the easy one to fix. You just bend up this guy, bend up that guy. That little uh, disc has a slit in it, or if it doesn't, you make one with a knife or a pair of side cutters, and you can just pull it out, like pull it out out of there. Take your side cutters, your nippers, whatever you got, clip that, and the one underneath because you don't they will overlap you don't want to short that out so you clip them off so they're yeah wherever but you want to leave some of this bent over like that because that's what supports this connection in the base of the transformer <coughs> so you need some support there and if you really want to go nuts a little bit of epoxy just to hold them or whatever it's up to you but I find it's not usually much of an issue so yeah trying to just get another clearer shot but I couldn't get a clearer shot so I'll try again so there is there's the capacitor so it's just a single sheet of mica and they vacuum deposited silver on there on both sides so those are your, that's your capacitor. So now, here I've bent up this guy, yeah, bent up this guy, bent up that guy. I've taken that little disc out and it goes in the trash can. Now you have to trim that and that so you don't short them back. Then you gotta bend this back down. I think I show that in the next one. Oh, no. Anyways, that's what you have to do. These are the capacitors that I typically use. So this only applies to an AM uh, type radio, not an FM type radio. 100 picofarad seems to get you in the ballpark. 99.9% uh, .9 of schematics do not list the value. They just show the capacitor there, but there's no value. The very odd one does. So technically, there's no real voltage across the capacitor. Like, yes, you might have 200 volts in the circuit, but it's not like across the capacitor because there's no real voltage drop across the coil so 200 volts is more than adequate for most of them and you can get longer lead ones I just get those because you can buy them for dirt cheap from DigiKey so that's a bag of a hundred for like a couple dollars so here I've soldered the two little capacitors in so now you're good to go ahead and put that back in your radio and peak it up and everything. The other design, what they did is they built a capacitor in the base here and they riv put a rivet through here and riveted. Those ones are a whole lot harder to get apart because you got to drill out that rivet without ripping off all the wire leads, right? Yeah. If the drill catches and it turns, it destroys the transformer. So. Typically what I do when they're those ones and you don't have a spare that you can fix to put in there, disconnect those leads, mark them so you know which, because it matters phasing and everything when it goes back together, and uh, drill out the rivet because it doesn't matter if you destroy the capacitor because you're going to destroy it anyways. And then you've got to kind of glue things back together. Like this just sits in here. You can just pull that out like it just sits there. 
and once the rivet's out there's nothing for it to really sit into so it kind of flops around just glue it in silicone it, whatever adhesive <coughs> not stick it back in there put your capacitors in put it back in and away you go it's all fixed so Greg this problem is common to just 455 KC no nope. yeah. any of the post-war <laughs> post-war small can capacitors the ones that don't have trimmer capacitors in them probably have those in them high-end stuff <coughs> does this like if you get into high-end communication stuff uh, on the newer stuff they don't put in the little silver micas they put in like the little dominoes you know the silver mica dominoes that everybody's familiar with yeah. you'll see them in there not all but some so when you say FM, you're talking about the FM band, the yeah. broadcast band. They so use the same thing in FM radios, but in that particular case, eight picofarads for those capacitors. Seems to get you into the ballpark of 10.7 megahertz. And so AM? 100 picofarads. Oh, okay. yeah. But yeah, there it is. And so that's what it looks like. You just stick your can back on, give it a little crimp so the can doesn't fall off, <laughs> put it back in the radio, you're good to go. Uh, another thing I've run into that's the same basic idea and you'll run into it on early FM sets so anything like 47, 48 in that era. Um, the trimmer cap that they use for setting the, your, you get your nice FM radio, you've restored it and all your FM stations are crammed into that much of the end of the dial, like at the low end of the dial and no matter how much adjusting you do, you can't vary it, it stays there. Well, that trimmer capacitor that sets that is suffering from the same illness. Mm -hmm. So what they did is they took and on the outside, like the inside, when you adjust it, there's a little plate inside that moves. And on the outside, there's a little dab of silver and you'll see it, it's black now. Well, it's gone, like it's not actually there anymore. It's tarnished away. <laughs> so there's no more capacitance. Like, so it doesn't matter where you put the thing, it's not going to adjust anything. So you have to change that capacitor out. And I've not found anything that typically mounts in that location, or you can't find replacements that are any better than the one that's in the radio. So what I do is I just sit, I have a bag full of 6, 8, 10, 12 picofarad capacitors, and I tack one in, check the band, Tack the next one in, oh, that's pretty close, good enough, out the door it goes. <laughs> so it's no longer adjustable at that point, but it's not going to go anywhere because that capacitor is fixed and will solve your issue, right? Oh, make sure, this. a lot of times this form is just stuck in there, it's not attached any physically in any way. So it, you can see it's a little bit of an angle, it just flops around. When you slide this back on, where you adjust it in the top is actually formed in like this and the core goes around it or the tube I should say goes around it or inside of it one of the two depends on the design so you got to kind of pay attention when you're putting it together that you get that tube in there or you'll go hey I can't adjust this because it's sitting like this in the can and uh, yeah so you just got to pay attention when you're putting it back together like if you want it to be real quick and cheap and dirty and easy, you don't even have to remove it. Just lift the one leg, snip it off, make sure it doesn't touch anywhere, uh, yeah. and you're okay. But I like to remove it just to remove any chance of a failure or anything. I just put a piece of plastic in between them and put them back down. That yeah. works too. Just so yeah. the support, because it's a plastic base and yeah. you know, lose the support. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, if you feel that uh, your little piece left in there isn't strong enough, like some of them just come up and they're just a little tab that's just barely bent over on the riveted ones more so than this style. And you don't have a whole lot there holding that, so a piece mm -hmm. of plastic and some epoxy or whatever mm -hmm. might, might help a whole bunch. Yeah. But there's lots of different designs and you just got to deal with what it, you got when you run across it. And sometimes you wreck them, mm -hmm. and there's just no getting around it. So, okay, Murray. Oh, wow.